Imagine waking up in a calm place where everything you own has a place and a good reason for being there. Your heart is happy and your mind is clear. Now, picture going through life's storms with a strong will, knowing that the only things you can control are your thoughts and actions. These ideas that seem like utopias are not impossible to achieve. They are at the heart of both minimalism and stoicism, two philosophies that were created hundreds of years apart, but share a goal of living a worthwhile life. Hi, and welcome to Simplicity and Stoicism. Let go to live a worthwhile life. We will go on a trip in this video that peels back the layers of selfishness and reveals the wisdom of old masters. This will help you live a life that you enjoy instead of just existing. First, let's talk about the growing modern minimalist trend. Minimalism is more than just a style, it's a way of life. It's about getting rid of the trash that fills up our thoughts and places and focusing on the things that really make our lives better. Minimalism started as an art trend in the middle of the 20th century that emphasized simplicity and realism. It slowly crept into many areas of culture, such as building and way of life. To recover their time, space and mental focus, people are embracing simplicity today. They are discovering that getting rid of the physical mess helps them build relationships, follow their hobbies and enjoy a level of depth that material things can't provide. Now, let's go back in time to the busy streets of ancient Athens, where Stoicism first emerged around the 3rd century BC. Like minimalism, Stoicism also seeks to simplify, but its main focus is on internal simplicity. This way of thinking says that the best way to live a happy life is to build self-control, logic and virtue. Stoicism helps people figure out what they can control and what they can't. It encourages people to focus on what they can control and let go of what they can't. We learned that happiness is not found in external situations, but in our views and actions through the wisdom of Stoic thinkers like Seneca, Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus. Letting go is what connects simplicity and Stoicism. While Stoicism teaches the wisdom of letting go of mental loads and bonds, minimalism urges us to let go of physical excess. In both philosophies, the idea of simplicity and separation is at the heart of freedom, the freedom to live a life that has meaning, purpose and happiness. We will learn a lot about the subtleties of both simplicity and Stoicism in this film. We will talk about where they came from, what they stand for, and how they can improve people's lives. We will also talk about how to apply these philosophies to our everyday lives and compare and contrast them. We will learn how actual people have changed their lives by embracing these ideas through case studies and comments. Finally, we will talk about what we have learned and encourage you to start using parts of minimalism and stoicism that work for you. As we begin this educational trip through the worlds of minimalism and stoicism, get ready to have your ideas about what it means to live a happy life, challenged, goals, virtue, and the courage to let go of what isn't important are the keys to a worthwhile life. Let's go down this road together. Now, let's get into the first part of our conversation, which is about understanding simplicity. The minimalist movement as we know it today did not start by itself. From the late 1950s to early 1960s, different kinds of art, mostly music and visual arts, gave rise to it. These types of art stress using simple things and don't believe that art needs to be complicated to be important. As time went on, this idea changed into living simplicity. In the early 2000s, as a way of life became popular, people began to question the consumerist culture that was ruling society. They wanted a life that was less complicated and more important, without all the things that come with it. This is where the modern minimalist movement got its start. It was a reaction to the excesses of capitalism and the search for happiness beyond material wealth. 
Today, let's talk about the main ideas that make up simplicity. To begin with, simplicity is all about making things easier. To make room for what really counts, you have to get rid of the extra, the useless, and the distractions. This could mean getting rid of junk in your house, making your schedule more manageable, or even cutting back on social media. It means making a space for yourself, both physically and mentally, that shows what you value and what's most important to you. This is the second core principle, being mindful. Making choices about what to keep and what to let go of is an important part of minimalism, which is not just about getting rid of things. Does this add value to my life? Does this align with my goals and values? Is what intentionality means. It means living with a purpose instead of just sliding through life. It's about making decisions that show what kind of life you want to live. In the third aspect, quality is more important than number. People in a consumerist culture are often told that more is better. This assumption is contested by minimalism. Less isn't better just for the sake of less. It's about having the right things. Instead of collecting a bunch of useless things, it's better to put your money into good things and relationships that will last. Keeping these ideas in mind, let's look at the many benefits of living a minimalistic life. To begin, simplicity can help you think more clearly. Minimizing clutter and other distractions can help us make a space that is good for concentration and creativity. Not having to deal with the cows around us frees up our minds to think more clearly and make better choices. Financial freedom is another huge gain. By planning what we buy and putting quality over number, we can cut down on spending a lot that isn't necessary. This can help you save money, get out of debt, and have the money to do things you love and have experiences that matter to you. Additionally, simplicity is good for the environment. Our carbon impact gets smaller when we use less. Making and throwing away things are two of the main things that hurt the earth. We are not only making our own lives better when we choose to live with less and make decisions that are good for the world when we do so. As with any trend though, minimalism has its share of bad press and misunderstandings. One complaint that is often made is that being able to choose to live with less is a luxury that not everyone can enjoy. Some people also say that minimalism can turn into another form of consumerism if people keep buying new minimalist things to replace the ones they already have. Some people also think that minimalism means living with very little or that it's an answer that works for everyone. It's important to remember that simplicity is not a rule, but a tool. This is a way to make your life fit your beliefs and goals, and it can be changed to fit your specific needs and wants. Although these complaints are important to look at, it is important to remember that minimalism is not a goal. Instead, it is a process of self-discovery and purpose. It's not a rigid set of rules, but a mindset that can be changed to fit different wants and ways of life. Minimalism doesn't expect us to be perfect. Instead, it pushes us to make progress and be aware of the choices we make. In the same way, simplicity shouldn't just be seen as an advantage. Although some parts of minimalism may be easier to follow for people who have more solid finances, the main ideas of being focused and focusing on quality over number can be helpful for people from all walks of life. It could be about making the most of what you have and being happy with simplicity, no matter how many things you have. To clear up the false idea that minimalism means living a simple or poor life, it is also important to note that minimalism is not always about having a certain number of things. Finding what is important and getting rid of what isn't is what it's all about. For some, this could mean a home with only the things they need, while for others, it could mean a carefully chosen collection of things that make them happy and serve a purpose. Foreign minimalism is a deep and alive concept that is more than just getting rid of stuff. It's about making a life with meaning, purpose 
and happiness by focusing on quality, simplifying, and making smart choices. Minimalism helps people get clear on their thoughts, be financially free, and protect the earth. But, like any theory, it has its critics and people who get it wrong. You should go into minimalism with an open mind, knowing that it is a tool that can be used in many ways to create a useful life. As the movie progresses, we'll look into the old wisdom of Stoic thought and see how, like simplicity, it can help us let go of the extra in both our outer and inner worlds. We will talk about the similarities and differences between these two philosophies and give you tips on how to use them together to live a better life. Stay tuned as we go on a trip through time and thought, pulling apart the threads of stoicism and simplicity and stitching them into a fabric of happiness, purpose and purpose. This is a call to rise to a life that is lived with awareness, ethics and meaning, not just to get rid of stuff or to be stoic in the face of adversity. May this trip make you think, question and embrace the limitless possibilities that lie in the simplicity and wisdom of minimalism and stoicism. As we leave the modern rooms of simplicity, let us go back in time to the world of ancient times where stoicism began. Stoicism, a branch of Hellenistic philosophy, first appeared in Athens in the early 3rd century BC. Stoicism's founder, Xenophon of Citium, taught from the Stoa Poikile, a painted porch that gives the philosophy its name. Then, in ancient Rome, Stoicism became very popular and was one of the most important philosophies during the Roman Empire. Seneca, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius are the three most important people in Stoic thought. In his letters and writings, Seneca, a Roman politician and writer, talks about how Stoic ideas can be used in everyday life. Epictetus, a famous Stoic teacher, was born as a slave in what is now Turkey. His lectures and Enchiridion are important works that give useful tips on how to live a good life. Last but not least, Marcus Aurelius, who was Emperor of Rome, is sometimes called the Philosopher King. His war missions are where he wrote the Meditations, which are his deepest thoughts on virtue, duty and the meaning of life. As we look into the main ideas of Stoicism, the first one that stands out is reason. To the Stoics, reasoning and reason were the most important things in the world. They stressed the importance of using logic to understand and get around in the world. People thought that this logical way of thinking would lead to virtue and peace because it let people make choices that were in line with nature and morality. The second idea is that you can control how responses happen. For Stoics, there is a clear line between what we can control and what we can't. We have full control over our thoughts, feelings and actions, but not over what happens in the outside world. We can remain composed in the face of adversity by concentrating on what we can control and letting go of what we cannot. The third principle is to seek virtue as the best thing that can happen. Wisdom, courage, justice and temperance are all included in the definition of virtue for Stoics. They thought that the key to happiness and joy was living a good life in harmony with reason and nature. So how does this old theory help us deal with adversity? Stoicism teaches us to separate ourselves from the chaos and look at things objectively through the lens of reason when we are faced with difficulties. By doing this, we can keep our bad feelings from getting in the way of our decisions and take actions that are consistent with our morals. It tells us not to see problems as bad things that happen, but as chances to learn and grow. Let's jump ahead to the present day. Even though it's an old theory, its ideas are still relevant today. Stoicism gives us a way to find our way through the storms in a world that is becoming more unstable and unsure. Cognitive behavioral therapy is a popular way to help mental health problems. Its focus on reason and control over responses is similar to this theory. 
Leaders in the business world are also using stoic concepts to make smart choices and build resilience in their teams. This theory gives people who are interested in personal growth tools they can use to strengthen their minds and live purposeful, honest lives. It is becoming a part of daily life through activities like writing, mindfulness and reflection that help people live in line with their ideals. Stoicism is a theory that has a lot of wisdom. It was born in Old Greece and Rome. Its main ideas are logic, controlling your responses and seeking virtue. These ideas give people the power to live happy, decent lives. It can be used as a guide in a world that is always changing, from the lessons of Seneca, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius to current psychology and leadership. As we learn more about Stoicism, it's important to remember that it's more than just a collection of philosophical ideas. It tells you what to do. It's a call to develop a wise and good mind, to recognize what we can control and let go of what we can't, and to embrace difficulties as chances to improve ourselves. It's an invitation to live with both purpose and wisdom. After going into great detail about Stoic thought, we now come to an interesting point where simplicity and Stoicism meet. The idea of letting go, letting go of excess, whether it be actual things or mental constructs, and finding a life that is meaningful, satisfied, and in harmony with our values, is at the heart of both philosophies, which were developed in different times and under different conditions. In the next sections, we'll look at how these two philosophies work together and how they differ, as well as how they can be used in our daily lives. We will talk about how the wisdom and virtue of Stoicism can be added to the purpose and simplicity of minimalism. Together, these philosophies can create a strong foundation for a life that is not only clear and resilient, but also deeply important. With an open mind and a desire to learn, let us start this journey of discovery. Be ready to test our habits, question our beliefs, and embrace new ways of thinking. The ideas of simplicity and stoicism invite us to go on a trip that is both about letting go and finding out what is really important to hold on to. This journey isn't just about ideas, it's also very emotional. We are all being asked to think about the choices we are making, the lives we are living, and the ideals we are supporting. It's a call to let go of what's extra and embrace what's important to let go of noise and embrace wisdom, to let go of what's temporary and embrace what lasts forever. Join me on this journey toward a life that is not just lived, but loved, not just endured, but honored, and not just short, but full of meaning. Let us use simplicity and stoicism as our guides. At one point, stoicism and simplicity stand next to each other as we walk the road of discovery. Though they came out hundreds of years apart, these two strong philosophies have a lot in common as well as clear differences. Now, let's take a close look at the tapestry they've made. Let's start with what they have in common. In the first place, both stress the importance of seeking simplicity and focus. By minimizing our material things and clearing out our physical places, minimalism pushes us to simplify our lives. Stoicism, on the other hand, advises us to simplify our inner worlds by using reason and concentrating on what we can control. In order to focus on what really counts, both philosophies guide us to get rid of the unimportant things. The second connection is that simplicity gets rid of extra things. This shows up in the form of giving up things that don't make our lives better. Stoicism is about letting go of excessive wants, feelings and ties that impede our pursuit of virtue and cloud our judgment. Both philosophies agree that too much, whether it's physical waste or mental chaos, can get in the way of living a happy life. The third thing they have in common is that they both stress being happy inside. Minimalism teaches us that happiness comes from living a life with meaning and purpose rather than from accumulating material things. 
Stoicism, on the other hand, holds that happiness comes from living in harmony with nature and reason, not from receiving praise or money from other people. Now let's look at what's different. The first difference is how they fit into history and culture. As a reaction to materialism and an excess of material goods, minimalism appeared as a contemporary trend, mainly in the Western world. Stoicism, on the other hand, has its origins in ancient Greece and Rome. It was an intellectual reaction to people's search for virtue and happiness in a chaotic world. What's different about the second one is its reach and use. Minimalism focuses primarily on the material parts of our lives, advising us to clear out our places and be aware of our spending. Stoicism, on the other hand, looks at more than just our outside situations. It looks at our thoughts, feelings and character as well. The third difference is in what drives each person. Minimalism is frequently motivated by a desire to increase one's sense of focus, freedom and room in one's life. It's about organizing one's surroundings. Stoicism, on the other hand, is based on moral theory. It's about cultivating one's soul and character. For the Stoic, it is their job to live a good life in harmony with nature and reason. When we think about these ways the philosophies are alike and different, we can see that they are like two sides of the same coin. They both guide us toward a life of simplicity, focus and happiness, but from different perspectives and with different tools. Imagine that simplicity is the tool that helps us get around in the real world by clearing out our places and narrowing our actions. Stoicism is the map that takes us through the internal seas, assisting us in using virtue and wisdom to manage our thoughts, feelings and character. They work well together to make something powerful. Adding the focus and simplicity of minimalism to the wisdom and virtue of Stoicism can help us make a life that is not only clear and focused, but also deeply important and in line with our greatest values. Let's embrace both of them as helpful guides rather than picking one over the other. The idea of simplicity should help us move forward and Stoicism should guide us to stay on a path that is true to who we are and what we value. Let's stop and think for a moment before we move on. Take a moment to think about the places we live and the things we keep around us. Do they have a use or are they just extra stuff? Now, look inside yourself. Think about your feelings, thoughts and actions today. Are they in line with our ideas or are they all over the place? Let us keep in mind the main points of Stoicism's call for wisdom and minimalism's call for simplicity as we go. Let's be builders and carefully plan a life that brings us the meaning and happiness our souls seek. Even though the two philosophies come from different places and have different goals, they both aim to help us live a life that is simple and full of what's important. Minimalism pushes us to master our inner world, while Stoicism asks us to clear our outer world. Where they meet, we find a way that leads not only to simplicity or wisdom, but also to a life with deep meaning. As we stand at the intersection of these two philosophies, we have the power and the tools to shape our journey. It will be as unique as each of us, but it will be focused on the goal of a more worthwhile and happy life. It's not always easy to go on this trip. Sometimes you have to be brave and let go. Each step we take on this road, though, weaves together threads of simplicity, wisdom, purpose and happiness to make a fabric. Let's take the flames of stoicism and simplicity with us as we enter the world of practical application with open hearts and minds. Let us learn more about these old philosophies, combine their ideas and live by their lessons. We should move forward with thanks. Thanks for the wisdom that has been passed down through the years and thanks for the chance to incorporate it into our lives. The actual application of these philosophies will be covered in the following section. We will talk about ways to incorporate stoicism and simplicity into your daily life, 
creating a fabric that is not only straightforward and wise, but also deeply and deeply important. Thanks a lot. The merging of these philosophies into our daily lives is a crucial step in our journey as we make our way through the rich fabric that is minimalism and stoicism. Here is where the theory turns into practice and where we take the first steps toward living a more worthwhile life. First, let's talk about how to put simple ideas into practice in real life. First, clean up your actual room. Take a look at what you own and ask yourself if it serves a purpose or makes you happy. If not, you might want to let them go. You can take your time with this. Start with one room or even just one box and work your way up. Second, be aware of what you're consuming. Think about whether the thing is important and in line with your ideals before you buy it. Other areas of life, such as obligations and relationships, can benefit from this mindset. Last but not least, put quality over number. Spend money on relationships and events that make your life better. This doesn't always mean spending money. It could also mean giving time and care. Thanks a lot. Let's look at how you can use Stoic theory to guide your decisions and actions going forward. To start, work on the duality of control. Know what you can control and what you can't. Your responses and choices are within your control, but you can't change what happens around you. When you're facing a problem, ask yourself what you can control and put your attention on those. Second, consider your beliefs and allow them to guide your choices. According to Stoicism, virtue is the best thing that can happen. Choose to act in a way that is honest, trustworthy and caring. Last but not least, regularly practice mindfulness and self-reflection. Be aware of your actions, choices and feelings. Think about them. This practice helps you become more logical and emotionally strong. How can we find a balance between stoicism and simplicity for our own growth? All of this must work together. Create a setting that supports your values and goals with simplicity and train your mind to be resilient, focused and good with stoicism. It's also important to know that stoicism and simplicity are not either-or ways of thinking. They are flexible and can be changed to fit your needs and goals. Be steady, take small steps, and be ready to change how you do things as you learn and grow. Here are some examples of real people who have combined the two philosophies to help you understand what I mean. Take the case of Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus, who are together known as The Minimalists. They both quit their corporate jobs, which gave them a lot of stuff, but no meaning. By concentrating on what was within their control and matching their lives with their beliefs, they made their lives simpler through simplicity and combined stoic principles. Another example is businessman and author Tim Ferriss, who has been very open about how stoicism has changed his life and the way he makes decisions. He has also begun to embrace simplicity, concentrating on the most important things and relationships in his life that are in line with his values. Putting simplicity and stoicism together can help you grow as a person and give your life more value. We can create a life that is not only free of mess, but also full of purpose and happiness by simplifying our outward surroundings through minimalism and developing a resilient and virtuous mindset through stoicism. As we come to the end of this part, I want you to take a moment to think about what you like about both stoicism and simplicity. Feel free to think about how you can apply these ideas to your own life and how they can help you grow and be happy. Let us keep going down this path together, embracing the wisdom and usefulness that stoicism and simplicity have to offer. There are many ways that these philosophies can make our lives better, help us let go of things that aren't necessary and give us a great sense of purpose. However, before we go any further, let's admit that the path to combining simplicity and stoicism can be very beneficial, but it is also not without its difficulties. It takes hard work, dedication, 
and sometimes being ready to leave our comfort zones. It's also important to remember that blending is not a goal, but a path of growth and change that never ends. Our ideas about these philosophies and how we use them will change as we do. There isn't a single way to be minimalist or stoic that works for everyone. They are with us on our lifelong path to becoming fully human. As we go along this road, let's remember to be kind and patient with ourselves. It takes time to make changes, especially ones that affect how we live and think. We will trip and fall sometimes, and that's okay. The important thing is that we get back up, learn from these mistakes, and move forward with more energy and focus. We are not going on this trip by ourselves. A huge number of people have gone down similar routes, combining simplicity and stoicism to find a deeper meaning in their lives. We can learn from their mistakes and be inspired by their stories. It can also comfort us to know that we are not the only ones looking for meaning and happiness. Crossing countries and time to learn more about the rich patchwork of Eastern religions and philosophies is the next step in our journey. With its thousands of years of history and thought, the East has a lot to offer people who want to live a worthwhile life. It's interesting that Stoicism and simplicity are related in a number of ways. Let's look into these lovely similarities and see how they can make our lives better. Buddhism. One of the most important ideas in Buddhism is the middle way, which encourages a road of balance and staying away from extremes. This idea is a lot like simplicity. According to the middle way, we can live a healthy life that is good for our spiritual growth if we don't indulge in either excess or frugality. The Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path, which are also part of Buddhism, are used as a guide to live without ties, which is a concept that fits with Stoic ideals. The Four Noble Truths describe human pain and what causes it. The Noble Eightfold Path, on the other hand, gives advice on how to stop suffering through right behavior, right motivation, and right mindfulness. When we talk about mindfulness, Buddhism has a long history of meditation and mindfulness, which is similar to Stoic mindfulness in that they both help people focus on the present moment and what's important. Meditation makes us more aware and calm, which helps us let go of fleeting feelings and focus on our true selves. Let's talk about the Tao and Wu Wei when we talk about Taoism. Like minimalism ideas, Taoism stresses naturalness simplicity, and not doing anything. Wu Wei means not doing or not acting. It doesn't mean not acting, but rather acting in harmony with the natural flow of things. It's about doing things without thinking and having a simple life. Yin and Yang are also important in Taoism. They stand for balance and harmony in nature. This balance is similar to simplicity and stoicism, which both try to keep your life and feelings in check. Living in harmony with nature is another part. Taoism supports life in harmony with the Tao, which is the basic idea that everything comes from. The stoic idea of living in harmony with nature to achieve virtue and happiness is closely related to this idea. Hinduism is another old faith in the East that talks a lot about Dharma and being simple, Moral responsibility is another name for Dharma. It is a way where focus and simplicity are very important. Following your Dharma means living a moral and purposeful life, which is similar to the focus of minimalists on being thoughtful. Hindu thought also stresses non-attachment, which is similar to Stoic detachment, and tells people not to be tied down by things they own or fleeting feelings. In Hinduism, yoga and meditation are not just physical activities. They are also ways to find out more about yourself and match your inner virtues. Thinking about yourself in a stoic way and connecting yourself with reason and virtue are a lot like this. Confucianism. Finally, let us talk about Confucianism, which has a big impact on Eastern thought. 
In Confucianism, the doctrine of the mean promotes moderation and balance, which is similar to simple ideas. Ren, which means kindness, and Li, which means rituals and right behavior, are also very important in Confucianism. In line with Stoic virtues, these ideas are about moral virtues and how to act in public. The Stoic stress on community involvement and the realization that we are all a part of a bigger whole is reflected in Confucianism's focus on social harmony and the value of relationships. Finally, both simplicity and Stoicism have a lot in common with Eastern religions and philosophies. Minimalism and Stoicism are both based on the Eastern ideas of balance, modesty, mindfulness, and not being attached to anything. Both Eastern and Western philosophies can help us get rid of unnecessary things and focus on what's important for a happy life. The focus on personal growth, social harmony, and how everything is linked in Eastern thinking makes it especially helpful. Some people find great wisdom in these lessons, which can help them live a happier, more worthwhile life. As we've seen, minimalism tells us to get rid of unnecessary things and put more emphasis on quality over number. Stoicism teaches us to think things through, control our actions, and see virtue as the best thing that can happen. Eastern philosophies, with their wide range of lessons, provide a wealth of wisdom on how to live in harmony with ourselves and with nature. Consider how you might incorporate these philosophies as you go about your daily life. You could follow the morals of Hinduism, the practices of mindfulness from Buddhism, the easy actions of Wu Wei from Taoism, or the social virtues from Confucianism. Put these together with the simplicity of minimalism and the sense that makes sense of Stoicism. Let's not think of these philosophies as distinct from one another, but rather as colors on a palette that we can use to paint our lives. We can connect people of all ages and countries through understanding and wisdom by taking ideas from both East and West. You can find a lot of examples in real life to help you understand. Many unknown stars live simple, virtue-filled lives. They are happy and satisfied, not because they have a lot, but because they know what's important. It's not a goal to reach this unification, it's a process. Remember what Laozi said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. This information can be that step for you. Take what the East and West have to say and find your middle ground by simplifying, rationalizing, harmonizing, and finding your way. It might not always be easy to follow this path. You might have to make compromises and tough decisions, but in the end, it gives us something priceless, a life with meaning, happiness, and a strong bond with the world around us. As we say goodbye to this interesting trip through minimalism, stoicism, and Eastern philosophies, may these timeless wisdom traditions inspire and guide you. Let's pause for a moment to think about the wisdom we've shared. We started by learning about the history of minimalism and its main ideas, which are to keep things simple, be purposeful, and put quality over number. We talked about some of the problems and misunderstandings about living a frugal lifestyle and also found the many benefits, such as mental clarity, financial freedom, and protecting the environment. In this lesson, we learned about the deepest parts of Stoic thought, which comes from Greece and Rome in the past. Through the writings of thinkers like Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, and Epictetus, Stoicism showed us the value of reason control over responses, and virtue as the greatest good possible. In this lesson, we looked at how Stoicism can help you deal with adversity and how it is still useful today. The next stop on our trip was the place where simplicity and Stoicism meet. We saw strong links between them in their search for simplicity, focus, and inner peace. But we also saw differences in their historical background, scope, and main goals. We talked about how these different philosophies can help us live a more worthwhile life by cutting down on the unnecessary things in our lives. 
In addition, we talked about how to use simplicity and stoicism in our everyday lives. We talked about how simple ideas can help us clear out not only our real places, but also our minds. We also talked about how to apply the stoic mindset to our decision-making and our responses to the things that happen around us. We saw cases of people in real life who have used both philosophies together to improve themselves. Our journey didn't end there. It got bigger as we crossed the ocean to the eastern shores. We took a look at some of the many eastern faiths and philosophies that have things in common with simplicity and stoicism. We found a lot of beliefs that fit with minimalism and stoicism. These include the Middle Way in Buddhism, Tao and Wu Wei in Taoism, Dharma in Hinduism, and the theory of the Mean and Confucianism. Please don't let this be the end of your study. Instead, let it be the start. Consider how you can incorporate the wisdom of minimalism and stoicism into your daily activities. Try out different things to see what works for you, and don't be afraid to change them to fit your needs. The road to a useful and happy life is as varied as people are. There is no one answer that works for everyone. Learning, unlearning and relearning happen all the time. It's a garden where you can plant seeds of wisdom from different philosophies. If you care for them, they will grow into a life that is full, rich and in line with your values and virtues. It is very important to realize that the things we buy, the praise we get and the social standards we use to judge our own progress are all temporary. The happiness and satisfaction that come from living a life based on simplicity, virtue and purpose are what last. Finally, let's carry on the wisdom that has been passed down for thousands of years. Let's carry the torch and light the way for each other and ourselves. Explore the world and learn new things, but most of all, look for value. As you go forward, may your life be like a well-written book where the depth of its writing is more important than its size. Minimalism, Stoicism and the wisdom of Eastern philosophies can help you write each page of your life with meaning, happiness and satisfaction. Thought leader Seneca once said, As long as you live, keep learning how to live. Let's keep learning, keep growing and most importantly, keep moving through life with virtue as our base and wisdom as our guide. Thanks for coming along with me on this trip. May your way be clear and may your heart serve as your guide as you work to live a life that is important and satisfied. Thanks a lot.